We have an interesting podcast for you today. You're having coffee with Conrad. Conrad Rocks! Welcome, welcome, welcome to another edition of Coffee with Conrad. This is going to be an interesting uh, podcast today. I'm going to tell you something. Before I, uh, most of this podcast was recorded on my phone, but I'm, I'm doing an intro first. And this, the qualities of these podcasts are not usually this bad. But I was praying about what to talk about. And I wrote down scriptures, and I had this great thing to say. And every time I recorded it, I would get a check in my spirit, a serious check. And I'm sitting back, I'm looking, I'm like going, you know, this is technically correct, but I don't think God wants me to say this. And I recorded it two or three times, and then all of a sudden I noticed that the roofers come and they start banging on the house. I'm like going, you know, God doesn't want me to say <laughs> God doesn't want me to say this. So today what I did is I just took my phone, I walked in the other room and I talked. And here it is. Um, God bless you. Lifting up the name of Jesus at conradrocks.net. Welcome everyone to another edition of Coffee with Conrad. This is Conrad. I love you. You know, I gotta tell you, I do these podcasts in advance, and today, man, there's like some warfare going on. I mean, it's good stuff. I mean, they're working on the roof to fix the leak, which is in my office where I do my podcasting. But I was doing my podcast today, and they show up while I'm recording. And I have a ton of stuff to do today, and tomorrow the podcast is supposed to come out. And I'm going to tell you something else. Um, I was doing this podcast for a long time. I've been, I was writing it, and I was, I was writing down the notes. I was thinking about it. I got into this huge thing. And it just, every time I tried to record it, the spirit was like, no. And I'm like, hmm. And I knew, I knew that theology was right. I mean, you know, I was, I was like going, you know, this, this seems right. And, um, but I, and I recorded it several times. And each time, each time it's like, nope, they're not ready for this. So I'm just going to, be real. I got to record this on my phone. They're banging in the other room. So <laughs> anyway, let's just be real today. I know a lot of people are going through some trials right now. Um, with with American Pharaoh winning, that that was a. Did you notice all the stuff that happened after that horse won the Triple Crown? Look at the the rulings that come out. Look at all the stuff that's happening. They're selling baby parts, and nobody seems to care. I <laughs> mean, you know and. And um, gay marriage and churches are leaning towards endorsing it. And I'm just like, oh, man, there's so much going on. But there is a believing remnant. There's a believing remnant. And uh, sometimes it looks hopeless. You know, we're, we're looking at the storm. We're looking at the storm. And we're going, wow, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Well, when Peter was looking at the storm, he began to sink. A lot of times we begin to sink in our own estimation of what's going to happen. And that is the opposite of faith. That is the opposite of faith. So, faith is something that's in the heart. You know, we believe in our heart and we confess the Lord Jesus with our mouth. Today, as we're thinking about our walk with Jesus and we're looking at this storm, let's, let's walk on water. When we walk on water, it's not something we decide to do. It's something that's pre-scripted from Jesus. Notice Peter said, Lord, if it be you, you know, if you're real, if it be you, command me to walk on the water. And then he could do it. Right now, a lot of us are looking at the storm. But when we keep our eyes and walk towards Jesus, we find that we're walking on water. Isn't that amazing? It's something that doesn't make sense. And God preserves us even when things that don't make sense. 
And and when we when we lean to our like how's our rent going to be paid, when we start leaning to our carnal understanding and we start trying to do things in the flesh, um sometimes we'll we'll start sinking because we're 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 yielding over to the way things have always been in our carnal estimation. And we need to keep that walk and towards Jesus. So you know that Psalm um thy word is a lamp unto thy feet and a light unto thy path. You know how Jesus lights up the steps that we're supposed to take. And uh you know no matter how bad your circumstances are, um if you just keep walking towards God, it's like everything is going to be okay. And you need to believe that. You know, the whole he sends the Holy Spirit which is the comforter. You know, he puts peace in our hearts. And there's this peace that surpasses all understanding. And I know things look bad for America right now, and I think things may look bad in your personal life, but we've got to hold on to Jesus tighter. We've got to hold on to Jesus tighter. Walk towards Him. One of the things I'm trying to muse out loud why the Lord didn't want me to share the podcast is a lot of it... I mean, I prayed about it. And I'm a little, you know, I'm like, I'm still trying to figure out why I'm not supposed to share it. Uh, Because I put a lot of work into it. (laughs) You know, I put a lot of, I'm like, Lord, this is pretty good stuff. But it it had a spirit of heaviness on it. And I'm like, you know, people don't need a spirit of heaviness right now, I'm thinking. You know, the Lord's probably not wanting to do that. And, uh, man, I'm just going to tell you, even though, you know, we can say things that are, technically correct but it doesn't bear witness with the spirit of god and are we walking after the spirit and i'm always talking about you know there's the word and there's the spirit and they agree right and i'm always talking about how saul was using the word to persecute christians remember he had letters from people that are high up in the church and he was using the word But he wasn't using the Spirit. He didn't even know the Spirit. So when I do these podcasts, I mean, I get real conviction before I press upload. (laughs) You know, I I wasn't that far. I mean, I was getting conviction. I'm telling you, I recorded it three or four times. I'm like, what is this? Because I know I was seeking God about the revelation. So let's say that it was a technically correct teaching, um, but God didn't want me to do it. Why, Why was I allowed the revelation? Maybe it's something for me. You know, I don't know. Got to pray about it. And speaking about this attack that America's under, um, a lot of things are going on. I'm getting emails from all over. There are serious attacks. And, and one of the first things that I, that I can say about this is we need to understand that it is an attack. He gets mad, but the devil gets mad because he knows his time is short. And uh, we just think, oh, wow, that's weird, that happened. Peter says, don't consider it strange, these fiery trials that you're falling into, you know? So we need to understand that it is an attack. We need to, what being lukewarm is not very fun right now. It really isn't. And we need to get, we need to jump in with both feet. You know, if you got one foot in the world and one foot in Jesus, uh, that's called a divided house. And it's not, it's not, there's no peace in that. And it's a divided house does not stand. Amen. So I want to empathize with you that, you know, I've been through trials. Um, Sometimes I'm going through them now. I mean, I don't talk about them much. But when you go through, man, it's really a good time to learn. You know, it's a really good time. Are we we crucifying our stinking thinking? Are we we laying siege to those strongholds? You know, and uh, sometimes we learn Mm -hmm. through those trials. And we can also be excited because on the other side of the trial is a reward. There's a crown of righteousness righteousness laid up for us. So I want to encourage you. You know, even when, like, I'm always talking about how David, the psalmist, you know, they're about, his own clan is about to stone him because he, not, I don't even think he made a bad decision, but remember that time in Samuel when they were going to stone him because all their wives and children and all their possessions were, were taken and they, they decided to blame David. Uh, because of a decision he made, and they were going to stone him. And then it says he encouraged himself in the Lord. So what he did, you know, he had a relationship with God, and he took it upon himself to to read those scriptures and rehearse 
that what the Lord told him about himself. You know, in, often those scriptures that we need to memorize, man, we really need to lay hold of those sometimes when we're, when we're in our cave and people are trying to stone us. You know, we need to really go, you know what? My carnal reasoning is not going to pay this rent. My carnal reasoning cannot pay this this insurance thing or whatever it is or whatever you're going through. My carnal reasoning cannot get me out of this sickness problem. It's got to be God. So there's a point, and I'm, and I'm reminded of Kenneth Hagin. Kenneth Hagin, man, um, I'm always I love testimonies. You should listen to Londa Choate's testimony. People confessed the word of God over her, and she got healed. So check that out. That's last Friday. But Kenneth Hagin has a similar testimony. You can look it up. He's the founder of Rama Bible Institute. He was uh, in his bed, and you know you can't. He's sitting there reasoning. You know, if you read his testimony, he's sitting there reasoning, even about Scripture. And then the Lord talks to him. There's this Rama word, right? <laughs> the Rama word is when the Spirit of God talks to you and lights up the Scripture you should use, so that you can use it as a weapon and overcome. So you'll go against Satan. It is written, right? So. That we need to get on our knees and pray. I mean, when things look terrible, don't just go, wow, things look terrible. Do something about it. It's time to get on your knees and seek God. And uh, fast and pray. <laughs> Jesus said, even the disciples, you know, they couldn't cast this one out because of their unbelief. You know, Jesus said, well, this kind comes out by prayer and fasting. So prayer and fasting increases your belief. So sometimes we just need to get serious about seeking God. We need to get serious about it. And if we look at our trials and we just turn on the TV and go, wow, I think I'll just watch my TV while the boat sinks, we're not doing warfare. We're not doing warfare by doing that. We're just drowning and we're letting Satan hypnotize us all the way down to the bottom of the ocean. You know what I mean? When God's throwing us that life raft, it's called the Word of God. Like I said, a lot of people are, are under attack right now. And there's this hypnotic thing of just go about business as usual. Maybe you want to lean into your worry. You want to just stay there and you feel good about worrying. And even though it gives your stomach acid and you just start all of a sudden, it, it's kind of an interesting thing. You feel good about worrying and then it just then you feel bad about it. And when you worry, basically you're agreeing with the devil. Okay, the devil sits here and he prompts things. He says, hast God said? That's his very first question. He sows words of doubt and unbelief, uses half-truths, and then you start listening to them and contemplating to him rather than encouraging yourself in the Lord. So when these trials and tribulations happen, it's time to get serious about seeking God. So I want to encourage you now, if if you're having um, trials and tribulations, and uh, don't just sit there and think, well, this is how am I, you know, how am I going to deal with this? Start going to the Word. Start going to the Word of God. Start seeking God the Spirit diligently. You know, read His Word. You know, one thing interesting that I was thinking about the other day, I think it, I think it prompt, it was prompted in a Bible study. We were talking about. I get I, I this is the part I grabbed from. I think we were talking about repentance and sanctification. And one of the things is that I've noticed that God it, there's a scripture draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Well, the prodigal son when he finally cognited, you know what? I need to go back to the father, which is representing God in that parable. Notice he started coming towards the Father, and the Father went out to meet him. So you start drawing near to him, and he'll draw near to you. And so if you draw near to him seriously through his word, you know, through you enter his gates with thanksgiving, enter his courts with praise, you meditate on his word, the Spirit of truth will show you where you are. He will light up your path. Amen? So, anyway, I know I'm rambling today. I have so much to do, so... <laughs> Anyway, and they're, they're working on the house in the other room. You probably heard some hammering. So God bless you. I just want to pray for you before I let you go here. Um, Father God, thank you, Lord, that, that you're real. Lord, I, I pray for the people that are going through something right now and they're looking at the storm. I pray that they know, you know, even if they look at the storm and sink, 
They cry, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Just like Peter cried out to the Lord. And you reached down and you pulled them up and you sent them back up before they got back in the boat. Lord, I pray that, that they have a relationship with you, the author and finisher of our faith. Lord, I pray that you know your word says that you're the comforter. Lord, I pray that you comfort those going through trials. I pray that, you know, Genesis 50, 20, when Joseph's talking about that, he says, you guys meant it for evil, but God meant it for good to save many people alive. Lord, I, th- I thank you that our trials have value. We can learn from them and we can help others be overcomers. Lord, I pray that the people that are going through these trials um, seek you diligently and you give them the word. The word of faith to help them overcome in Jesus' name. Thank you for listening to this. God bless you. And uh, remember to share this with your friends. And I'm, I'm sorry, there's just working on the house today. I can't, you know, I got to upload this for tomorrow. <laughs> so there you go. God bless you. Till we meet again, dig deeper and go higher. Hi, this is John with John and Java House. This is the Kid Renegade Redeemed with Forever Redeemed Ministries. This is Tiffany White with Hey Ministries. This is Dan the Coffee Man. This is Glenda Linkus from WingsOfProphecy.com. Jill Dyson from Angel Street Ministry. This is Teacup Ministry for Women. This is Marianne Sanson from Google Plus. This is Charles Michael from France. Chrissy and Wyke on the Stander for the Lord. This is Janet with Overcoming Abuse God's Way. Spreading hyphen joy. Org. This is Gerald Thomas in New Hebron, Mississippi. This is Mordecai from Oklahoma. This is Vicki at Michael Towns of New Beginnings. This is Stephen Barrett from Holy Fire, Japan. We are Andy Foxy with Conrad. ConradRock.net. Do you rule? Conrad Rock. Dig deeper, go higher at comradrocks.net.